Hi, and welcome back to the Camp Chaos Chronicles. Now we're waiting for a few parts to finish up the transmission clutch install. And while we're doing that, we're going to get started on the brake modifications, which is really what I'm interested in this season anyway. So first thing, let's make some room in here. Dang it. Now you may be asking yourself, what are you going to be modifying on the brakes? I mean, haven't you been running this car for 10 years? Yeah, that's true. However, if you remember from the Franken Car Does Road America video, there's a couple of times uh, when I'm breaking a little bit deeper into corners. In fact, the last time into Canada corner, I went real deep and the car was just kind of all over the place. Took, uh, took a lot of counter steering in order to keep it going straight. Now, it never used to do that. When I first started driving this car and it wasn't particularly fast, it wasn't a problem, but the faster I went, the worse it got. And the more modifications I made to things, the worse it got. Now, a couple other things is the fact that I have to replace the rear brake pads twice as often as the front brake pads. And also, while the front calipers stayed nice, bright, shiny red, just like any of the red that you see in the car here, the rears are chocolate brown. These have gotten really, really hot. Now... There are those that would say, yeah, but the brakes are inboard on the rear end of these cars. They're going to run hotter. Yeah, they're going to run hotter, but not that hot. Not screaming hot like that. These brakes should be, be able to uh, live just about as easily, particularly if you put some ducting back there as the front ones do. So what are we going to do about this? A lot of cars have something called a proportioning valve that is located somewhere between the front and rear brakes of the vehicle. And the proportioning valve's job is to vary the pressure between front and rear because you really don't need to have as much pressure, hydraulic pressure showing up at the rear as you do in the front. And if you had the same amount of pressure showing up at both ends, the rears would lock up because under braking all the weight goes forward or a lot of the weight goes forward and uh, you don't need as much pressure back there to provide efficient braking. So, as I said, a lot of cars have proportioning valves. However, the HE, up until I think 1990 when they started having the ABS system, didn't have a proportioning valve. Everything was sized appropriately for the conditions that it would experience under normal driving. And some of that driving is going to be pretty spirited based on the type of car that it is. Well, here's the problem. When you change anything with a car, the balance is going to be different. And what I've done with the, uh, the track car is I've changed the front spring rates. In fact, I've tripled them so that there's less weight transfer forward. And what that does is causes the rear to have more weight on it and therefore the braking is going to be more effective at the rear. That's the theory I'm going with. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to install one of these. This is a proportioning valve. But what it does basically if you turn this little knob here it varies the amount of pressure that shows up at the rear brakes. So this is what the tilt and proportioning valve enables you to do. This is sort of the basic uh, installation that, uh, and the reason that I selected this particular proportioning valve is that it's number one, simple to use, number two, simple to install, number three, it's still sophisticated enough to tell me what I want to know. 
so here's what's happening pressure wise here we've got inlet pressure that's being provided from the master cylinder outlet pressure that's actually showing up at the front and the rear brakes of the car now you can see here in this red trace that both of them increase the same until you get to a certain point then what happens is the proportioning valve will taper off on the pressure going to the rear it won't decrease the pressure it'll still increase but it'll increase at a lower rate based on the adjustment of the proportioning valve you change the setting of the valve that point goes up to here and you get the same linear uh, uh, trace that uh, would indicate the rear pressure same thing up here as you turn it again just so you know this part that you can find underneath the master cylinder with three lines running to it this is not a proportioning valve this is just a junction block for the front brakes fluid goes in here line comes out here to one brake out there for the other brake this is not a proportioning valve I've seen two of these on eBay for sale for over $35 that calls this a proportioning valve. It's not. If you can look through it, it's not. Another thing, this thing right here, this is not a proportioning valve. This is just simply a union between two flare fittings. Also, if you can look through it, it's not a proportioning valve. You know, I think the best place to mount it would be right about there. Shifter is a nice reach right here. The handle fall right on it. So, won't even have to look at it. Well, there's the mount. That might be the easy part. Well, we got the install done, and this is how it looks from the bottom. This is the normal run right here up to this point where it takes a bit of a jog to the inside of the frame rail. And then it goes up here to the original union, and then the new line goes up through that hole right there. From there, you can see it comes up along the side of the transmission tunnel goes in the front of the proportioning valve, comes out of the proportioning valve, and then follows the top of the drive shaft tunnel, takes a jog up, and then goes under where the rear seat would be, and then comes out through that bulkhead right there. You can see then that the line comes out of the rear passenger compartment. There's another split grommet there with some RTV around it. And this goes up to a bracket that I've made that actually accepts the original uh, brake line. The original location of that fitting used to be up there on those two bolts right there. And I decided to put it here for two reasons. Number one, I ran out of brake line. Number two, it's got a real nice curve from its attach point on the carrier for the IRS and that point right there. And if I wanted to, I could zip tie it to the parking brake cable right there. And this is easier to get to than, uh, than the other original point. So, it's in. Well, there it is, another job done. It's located almost exactly where it needs to be. Another inch and a half further forward would have been perfect. Got to kind of crank my wrist a little bit, but you know what? That's going to be close enough to perfect for me. So next thing we need to do is we need to move on to the rear brakes. We've got some uh, rebuilding and refurbishing and uh, upgrading to do back there, which is kind of the point of this exercise. So yeah, that'll be next week. 
So if you like these videos, like, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, and leave some comments down below so we can know what we can do to do what we do better. So we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicle.